So welcome to our unit on making art in a pandemic. We have with us here my friend Cristiano Pereira, or do you prefer Cristiano Lopez Pereira? Uh, Cristiano Pereira. Okay. Uh, who is originally from Brazil and resides now here in Buffalo, where he came to study and met his husband. Um, I know Cristiano because he's also the stepfather of one of my students who also contributed a module to this course. Um, Cristiano, would you like to uh, introduce yourself a, a little bit with our audience? Uh, yeah, well, you, you pretty much covered bases, but uh, yeah, I came to Buffalo seven years ago uh, to do uh, part of my uh, doctorate. And I stayed one year and uh, then I was back and forth uh, because I have met my uh, now husband. Uh, two years later, uh, we got married. I finished my doctorate back in Brazil. Uh, I was, uh, like I said, I was back and forth and I started the immigration process. And it was a long process that supposedly is the easiest one because I just got married to an American citizen, but it wasn't easy at all. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but I've been officially here as a resident uh, about two years already. And, uh, and I, as an artist, I, I've been uh, showing my artwork, uh, well, now more here in America, but I was between Brazil and America. Um, and uh, so the, the, I, I've been showing now on Dreamland Gallery, Glow Gallery, uh, uh, Gallery Q in Rochester, uh, and last year at uh, uh, Virtue Penny Art Center. I was part of a, a show about portraiture uh, there. So, so yeah, I've been I've been working here now, and uh, and even before the pandemic, which is our subject today, uh, I was dealing with the. Uh, with the immigration process itself or, or the uh, what I like to call the clash of cultures or the mutual influences between uh, Brazilian and American culture. So I was already working in a series uh, of uh, paintings and you know most visual artworks uh, and then the, the pandemic came so um, uh, Cristiano, maybe bef before getting quite to that, um, because I I, uh, I, I want to show up here your 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 biography mm -hmm. here a second. Okay. Um, and also the the portraits here, because I think a lot of these were the things that were shown, or at least one of them I think was shown in the Birchfield Penny. Correct? These no, these was shown in uh, Gallery Q in Rochester. In Gallery Q. Okay. Yeah, this is a series called Like Me, and uh, and it's a portrait series based, uh, so far I have a 30, I forgot the number, but 38 portraits or something like that, uh, of uh, what I like to call queer icons, uh, which includes uh, drag queens, porn stars, uh, singers, uh, anyway, people from all over the world that have, uh, uh, some meaning to the the queer community, mm -hmm. and uh, the series I showed at Birchfield Penny last year, it was part of my uh, doctorate research, which is called Pintosas, and uh, it was uh, the same series I had the presentation at Canisius years ago. Right, if you remember? So it's a videos, uh, uh, the video installation series, uh, where I was interviewing gay guys again, from all over the world, um, while I was painting their uh, portrait. But like, I wasn't, I wasn't included in the, in the video at the end. It was only the, the model. Uh, but you could hear me painting or talking about the painting. And the conversation was mainly about, you know, how you uh, see yourself in society, how, uh, how you build your, uh, gender in a sense because uh the name uh, the title of the the, the series pintosas it's a slang in portuguese which can be translated to sissy or or even fag in a really bad way uh so of course it's a derogatory term but 
uh, it has a, a hard to translate meaning uh, that in Portuguese has a relation to painting itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, the better way to try to translate this expression uh, in this case, uh, the better, better uh, way I found uh, is to relate to the expression uh, showing your true colors mm -hmm. because it has a relation to paint itself colors and uh, so uh, the, the only difference is that in Portuguese is really like bad when you call someone pintosa, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that that uh, artwork I, I showed last year. Um, I was still working with this series we are seeing now on the screen, the Like Me series. Um, but then later, the like I was saying, the uh, the impact of the immigration in my life and uh, the the. The clash of cultures, like I said, uh, it started. To, it started to gain like a, a, a bigger uh, uh, volume in, in my life, you know. So uh, now you're showing the first uh, artwork that I decided to paint. This is a painting on the canvas. Um, is the first artwork I decided to start a series with. Um, and for this series, I, uh, I was looking for images that could, could be recognizable uh, by a Brazilian audience, but it will be not easily recognizable by a, an American audience. Uh, and I did this, a little bit about this, you know, the same uh, uh, thing in the Like Me series, because I was painting famous people, famous queer people, but they were basically famous to queer people. So uh, a gay person, a, a, a lesbian, a trans person, they will recognize those, uh, most of those uh, portraits, but probably a straight person wouldn't. So I was already playing with this, uh, almost like a game with the viewer, you know, to create this, uh, this bond like I was doing in the Pintosa series because I was painting uh, the model and I was talking to the model and, and recording the process. So my interest, it's always to, to create this connection and, and try to make the images, uh, well, I, I, I'm sure all the artists try that, but I, what, I, what I was trying to say is that try to make the images be more than images, you know, be like, uh, something that connects people or something that creates a different meaning. So back to this painting. Uh, we have clearly we recognize, most of people recognize Michael Jackson. And uh, we don't have, at least as an American audience, I, I don't think you guys have a, a clue who the blonde uh, lady is. But yeah, in Brazil, <laughs> <laughs> but in Brazil, she's, she's huge. Uh, she, she's still big, she's, she's alive, she's, uh, she's still working, and, uh, but she's not as famous as she used to be. Um, and uh, every time I try to explain her level of fame, I compare, she's, she was something between Hannah Montana and Madonna. <laughs> she was as sexual as Madonna, but she was uh, working with kids. She was uh, doing a TV show which, yeah, it's weird, but uh, for a Brazilian standard, uh, well, it's still weird, but it's more <laughs> common than we think. Uh, so, of course, I chose this image also because I was trying to deal with the, well, since last year with the documentary and uh, everything about Michael Jackson, I was trying to deal with this, uh, with the meaning of his image, you know, as, a, as an idol. Uh, so I think everything came together, you know, those, those problems and, and the, the mixed feelings I had about his image and the mixed feelings I have about her image and the, the different cultures coming together um, to explain a little bit more about this uh, painting. Uh, the name A Conquista da América, it's uh, the conquest of America in English. Uh, and, uh, I, I was, I reproduced a magazine. It was the best-selling magazine back in the 90s in Brazil called Manchete, which, which means headlines. Um, and this was when they, when they met, you know, 
And it was, it was like when they met, it was like this big thing in Brazil. You know, she was, she was the most famous person in Brazil, and he was the most famous person in the world. Uh, so it was seen as she was like, oh, she finally made it. Now she, you know, now she's friends with Michael Jackson. Now she's gonna conquer the America. She's gonna conquer the world. And she was starting a. She was trying to start a series of uh, TV shows uh, for an American uh, broadcasting company. I don't remember which one it was, but it was. Uh, I remember they, they had some, you know, negotiations. But the ironic part, of course, is that it never happened. So, so I think this. Uh, this painting to me in a personal level has a lot of meanings because of this uh, uh, constantly, I'm sure for a lot of uh, uh, immigrants that come to America, uh, I'm sure people can share this, uh, the famous American dream, you know, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna make something now, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to, you know, uh, to be successful and, and it's it's sad in a way because she was already big, she was already famous and rich, and you know, and we used to call her the queen. So <laughs> yeah, so even even a personality like like her uh, was trying to get the American stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. Yeah, and this is a uh, well. Flip flops, uh, chancla, as uh, a lot of um, uh, Latin people say, or chinelo in in Portuguese, is a huge part of uh, Latin culture, and uh, so we we wear them like everywhere uh, to do, and like all over the year, like uh, during during the whole year, because it doesn't matter if it's winter or summer, we are always wearing uh, flip flops. Uh, when I, during my immigration process, I was uh, forced to go to Brazil because of the, the previous visa I had uh, during the, uh, my doctorate. Uh, they had some rules attached that I had to go back to Brazil and you know, stay there for a while. But when I was forced to do that, I was already married. So of course I respected all the, 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 the time I have to, to stay and everything else, but it was still painful to be uh, uh, forced to be in a, in a place I, I didn't want to be, you know. Uh, like I said, I was already married. I love my country. I have no problem there. I don't feel, I feel safe there. I have my family, my friends, but I guess everybody uh, can share this, this feeling of, you know, when you are forced to do something, and especially when there's uh, relationships, uh, you know, involved it's uh, it's harder so when i was there during a, 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 a little bit more than a year uh of course i was wearing flip-flops all the time and uh, i bought this pair uh, of uh, of uh, flip-flops and it had the two cans on it and you know this tropical paradise that we are always evoking uh, when I bought it, I wasn't thinking of doing any artwork, but at the end, uh, since the process was, uh, it lasted longer than I, than I was expecting, I, I noticed the, the image uh, fading away. So I decided to, to save this, uh, one of the, one of the, the, the flip-flops and do something someday. I, I, I wasn't sure yet. Um, and ironically, the, the right foot was the one that ripped away ripped off uh, and it happens all the time you know because it even though it, they are a nice uh, uh, brand of flip-flops they 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 rip all the time because we wear them all the time so I don't know in American culture but we have this uh, in, in Brazil at least and, and I'm sure in Latin America in the whole Latin America it's uh we have this uh, superstitious way to think about the left foot and, and of course, here the left hand, and you know, uh, uh, it's always like uh, related to bad luck. You know, like oh, you in, in Portuguese we say when you start with the left foot, it's it's not a good a good sign. So of course, like the the left foot being saved, saved, 
it was uh, part of the idea. So, uh, so at the end, I decided that the the flip flop itself itself was the work. Uh, uh, Marcel Duchamp, a French artist from the beginning of the 20th century, uh, he was the first artist to make uh, a ready-made, and he he created this uh, this uh, category, uh, which is like. An artist look at something, uh, any object, and and he says this is an artwork, and just by saying that that's an artwork, just by picking the the object that creates an artwork. So I uh, I it, it's my first ready made because usually I'm a painter, uh, but I thought it was uh, it was an interesting piece, and it's almost like a. a I'm missing the word in English. Something uh, like an amulet, you know, mm -hmm. something that you know it's charged with energy or or meaning or you know history. So uh, so yeah. Oh, and one more thing. The name of the brand uh, it's Avayanes, which is which means Hawaiian in uh, in English. So it's even more ironic. Right. I have a, just in, a question. I'm not an art historian, but I wonder if you see sort of the fading image of the tropics as sort of a commentary on the fact that you reside quite farther north now. Oh yeah, sure, sure. It's the, the lost paradise. And that's why I called, uh, I named Exile. Mm -hmm. It has all, all these uh, levels of meaning. Yeah, and this is uh, this was the beginning of this year. I forgot to put the the date, but it, it was already this year. Uh, I don't know if uh, if everybody can recognize what what is burning on this image, but is the Statue of Liberty? Actually, it's a copy of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, <laughs> Yes, a bad cop. in New York Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> uh, the thing is, we have uh, a chain of uh, stores in, in, in Brazil called Avan, which is uh, H-A-V-A-N, and no relation to Havana, Cuba, but anyway, it's something related to the, the CEO name, something like that. Anyway, uh, more recently, they've been uh, in, you know, headlines and, you know, related to the far right govern Bolsonaro we have since last year. And he's an he's a open supporter. He's, you know, he's always praising him and, and back and forth. The president is always praising this guy as well. So... Uh, at the end, I don't remember when, but it was either December or January this year. One up, oh, sorry, uh, all the stores are, uh, uh, all the buildings, uh, they make, I, I don't know if you can see the, the building in the background. They, they are made to mimic the neoclassical style of the White House. Okay. You know, the, the Greek temple. And it's a poor copy, like I said, but that's the, the whole idea. Uh, and in front of every, every store, they have a copy of the statue. And they are huge. They are huge. So, like I was saying, uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, this year, uh, someone burned one of the, the statues. It was either a bomb or just like, you know, just fire or whatever, you know, it was probably caused by someone. Uh, the CEO was like flipping out online, you know, doing live videos and he was uh, uh, naming the, the act as a terrorist act. And the president spoke about it, saying that it was horrible and he fell for him. And at the end it was just like, a lame statue, you know, with no artistic value and poor taste. And, uh, and of course, I'm not saying that the original one is uh, of poor taste. It's a beautiful statue, you know, from a French designer uh, that we have here. It's a beautiful art artwork. I, I will suffer if I see the original 
uh, uh, burning like this. But like this one is just like a, you know, a stupid copy. And, and of course it says a lot, the, the fact that he puts the, the statues in front of each store, it says a lot of uh, imperialism, uh, colonialism, uh, and, and just the fact that we, like the first image, like the, the magazine, we only see value outside Brazil, you know? Mm -hmm. So everything that it's imported, everything from, from America or from Europe, it's it's something with value, so so when I, when I saw the video of the image burning, uh, and it had this beautiful sky as a background, I got really impressed with the image. So I, I took a, a still of the video, and uh, and I made the painting. And it's a it's a small painting, and I I, I like to call it like anti epic because you know it's it, it's supposed to be the opposite of epic. Um, with this, uh, with the um, original event that sparked this, was it po politically inspired that someone burned the statue? Probably, yeah, I think so. I believe so. I, I'm, I don't think they ever uh, call who uh, burned the statue, um, but I think so. And, and it was it was used as political, uh, especially uh, by the CEO and the president. And um, a sad fact is that, of course, Brazil. It's a it's a everybody knows that Brazil is a violent uh, country. We have all kinds of problems with the uh, poverty and police brutality and people dying and kids dying, uh, and. Uh, and personalities like artists or, you know, recently, more recently, uh, dying and the president never says anything. He never acknowledges when a politician or an artist or a kid got murdered or, you know, so he never acknowledges anything, anything. He never says he's sorry or, you know, they're gonna pray for the family or whatever. But when the statue got burned, he said something. So it's outrageous, you know. Right, right. Valuing a, a, an exterior foreign symbol more than one's yeah. citizenry, right? More than life. Yeah. And on a lighter note, <laughs> <laughs> we come to this uh, this painting. Um, I believe all the all artworks are political. And uh, in my previous series, the Like Me series, it was, I'm not sure if it was clear enough that the political aspect of the series, no, because I was painting queer uh, subjects and they were, they would probably be recognized by a queer audience. So we had this, you know, this whole, um, uh, separate level of meaning and uh but with this series i've i've been i've been more uh explicit political you know um i i believe is because i'm 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 uh, going through this process of uh well i went through the process of immigration and now i'm living here and uh i'm feeling the pressure of uh fitting into a society that it's not mine and again like i said my case it, my case is the easiest one i got married i have a, a, a loving husband i love my family i love my life uh, but there's a part of my life that it's it, it's you know I, i'm trying to fit i'm trying to make sense out of it mm -hmm. and uh so i think of course, this is uh, it's showing on, on, on my uh, new artworks. Uh, so this one, it's a, it's a little bit less political, if I can say that. It's not as explicit as the, the burning statue, for example. Um, but it says a lot about cultural appropriation and uh, cultural uh, colonization and of course uh, when you see when a, when a when an American person see this painting uh, 
uh, you probably recognize a bad copy of Mickey, uh, Captain American, and uh, Popeye. Mm -hmm. And the other two figures are kind of, you know, but the figure uh, behind, right behind uh, Captain America, it's a, it's a famous character, yeah, this one, is a famous character, uh, it was a famous character from Brazilian television named Fofão, which is something like fluffy, big fluffy guy, something like that. Uh, and again, it's a bad copy as well, so that's why he looks terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but the original was cute, and as a kid, I used to love that character. <laughs> And uh, he, was, he was always on TV uh, uh, hosting, like I said, a TV show, a kid TV show, and, and they would show uh, cartoons and stuff like that. And at the end of the group, we have the clown, and it's just, it's just a regular clown, you know, and it's written palhaço on his, uh, his uh, clothes, which is clown in Portuguese. Um, but this, if a Brazilian person see this image, they gonna, uh, uh, smile right away because they recognize right away. This is called Carreta Furacão, which is something like Hurricane Train, and it's a dancing group that we have in Brazil uh, in poor uh, neighborhoods. Uh, they have this, uh, it's actually a bus, they call it train, but it's actually a bus, uh, like those buses that uh, go around the city, show in the city, you know, open bus. Um, and they have a sound system where they play like loud dancing techno music or whatever music they have and they dance all over the around the, the neighborhood uh, you can pay to join the the bus you know to join the party or I guess they can get uh, hired to, to go to your party, you know, and, and dance and just, they don't sing, they don't do it, they just, just dance. And they do acrobatics, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and since it's Brazil, again, it's uh, usually sexual, you know, usually they twerk, they do, you know, it's always in a, uh, they try to crack jokes, you know, like, um, so yeah, so uh, we have this video that uh, became viral uh, probably seven years ago or something. And it was this video, they are in front of their garage in the background. You can barely see like the, uh, the little trolley, a car, you know. These were, were, uh, were, this was the, their, their place. Um, so this, this video became viral and I decided to paint because to me it's so, it's so unique in the cultural appropriation uh, 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 aspect because, yeah, we are um, we are colonized in a way by by those characters and movies and you know a, a large part of what Brazilian audiences uh, see uh, it's American movies and American cartoons and you know. The, the magazines, the graphic novels. Uh, so, but on the other way, uh, we have this group that they create this, uh, this uh, masks, they make the, the, themselves the masks. Mm -hmm. But in, um, like I said, it's a bad copy, you know, and they just dance, they just make fun. So at the same time, they are praising and you know, making a joke about it. So it's, uh, I think the image is, uh, it's really interesting. And Mickey, Mickey is playing uh, just a bucket, you know, a water bu bucket. And of course the best one is uh, Captain American twerking. So I thought it would be something that Americans audience will be uh, intrigued by. I, I definitely think an American audience will see this and, and have a shock of recognition, but not necessarily <laughs> know how to read it. Yeah. And that was what you, you know, to provoke thought or, or, or questions about it, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And to connect uh, the audiences in different ways, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is the yeah. painting that we are here to talk about more in depth. Yeah, yeah. Because this is a, 
this painting is started as a response to the quarantine, to the pandemic itself. Uh, the previous images I was painting before the, the whole pandemic started, uh, well, at least like, you know, the quarantine. And uh, when everything started, my life didn't change a, a lot because um, I've been unemployed since uh, last November. So I'm already home like all the time. And, uh, and as a studio artist, um, I'm used to be confined. I used to be by myself painting and, you know, doing my stuff. But on the other way, the, the use of masks were, were bugging me. And, and, and I think in a particular way, of course, I'm not, I'm not opposed to use masks every, every time I, I went out, this whole time I was wearing masks. Um, but I'm a portrait artist. I paint people and I, I, I love paint, painting faces. I love looking at faces. So to me, it had like a, almost like an extra level of, uh, of meaning of, uh, you know, having the, everybody covering the, their uh, faces. So I was trying to deal with that. And uh, I'm sure every artist can, uh, can share this feeling with me that it's always hard to, to create a response when you are um, living the, the, you know, the situation. So we are still living this whole thing. And uh, so it, it, it's hard to, to come up with something, you know, to create a meaning. Uh, but then you invited me for the, uh, the, the, the class and I was uh, trying to figure out what to do and what to talk about. At first I was, uh, I, I thought I would talk only about my, my life as a, as an artist, you know, and you know, how I, uh, how I work by myself and, you know, how I like to be at home and, you know, and uh, the relation I have with masks and how it was uh, bugging me in a sense. But then I saw the image that I used to, and I, I think it's in the next uh, yeah. uh, slide, if you, if you want to show. Yeah. 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 Then I saw this image. And when I saw this image, of course, I, I'm sure like everybody, I hope everybody that saw this image got like immediately offended and, you know, because it's just horrible by, by itself. Um, but to me, was even more problematic or disturbing because the image on the, the little thing she's holding, it's uh, is considered uh, a saint in Brazil, a folk saint in Brazil. Uh, called Anastasia, and uh, we, we call yeah. This is the image that she used to to make the the little thing, the little sign. Um, little cast sign. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's a it's a long story. Like this, uh, I'm gonna start from from the beginning. This is a, a drawing, uh, a print from 1839, and uh, it was made uh, by a, a French uh, artist called. Jacques Arago, and uh, in 1968, I guess, uh, they, they brought the image back because they had a, an exhibition in, I'm not sure if it was Sao Paulo or Rio, it was in Brazil, and uh, we had already this uh, uh, legend of a saint, legend of a enslaved African woman that got tortured with the muzzle and but she was she was uh, people started to to relate her existence to to miracles and start praying uh, to her uh, so when they found the when they showed the image uh, people were already associated with uh, uh, with the legend and maybe it is her Maybe it's not. We don't have uh, material. We don't have documents to prove her existence. Uh, we have like different uh, versions of the legend. Uh, 
one of the versions say she was a beautiful princess from Africa that got called and brought uh, forced to, 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 to go to Brazil and it was enslaved. And since she was too pretty, uh, she was forced to use this mask uh, and, and the, the color. Uh, the other the other version is that the, the mozos are to avoid the slaves to kill the, themselves because uh, I read something about eating dirt to to kill us to, to, to commit suicide uh, so the muzzle could be something like that or to avoid the the people to to eat anything like to steal from the plantation mm. you know um, are so there any to, legends sorry sorry no, I just wonder if there's any legends about uh, muzzling uh, the slave because of things she may have said or... Um... I'm not aware of that. As far as I read, as far as I researched, uh, the, the muzzles are, for, you know, um, to avoid this and, of course, to torture. But, of course, like, uh, the voices is still uh, uh, related. And, uh, but I'm gonna go back to the, this point later because I wanna go back to the sign. Uh, so yeah, so when I saw this, I immediately recognized Anastasia and I was like, wow, like she has no clue who this uh, figure uh, represents. And so this was already like horrible. And when you read the sign, it's even more, um, and the whole, the whole thing, the whole, you know, meaning of the protest, that they were protesting the, the use of masks. So that hit me in a way because, like I said, I was feeling uncomfortable with masks, but I was like, hey, I'm not going anywhere to protest <laughs> the use of masks. I, I'm just staying home. And or if I have to leave, I'm, I'm going to wear the, the, the mask and, you know, life goes on. So when I saw that, I, it, it was just like... So I decided to paint the, the, the image. And of course I was, uh, I wasn't sure about painting uh, this image because as you probably had a clue, have a clue already uh, from the, the, the works I showed, I usually paint something that I like, mm -hmm. that I, I can relate to. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna mention this later. Oh, this, sorry. This, but, yeah. Um, so I usually paint something that I can relate to, something that I like, something that gives me a, a good feeling or, you know, like the, the Like Me series. It's almost like fan art. I'm painting someone who I admire. So this was the first time I was painting, not, well, probably the first time, but that I was painting something disgusting to me. And uh, it was, very hard, and you, you can go back to the painting now. Uh, it was very hard, and the first version, I had the, I had everything on it. I, I only changed the colors and the, 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 the cropping itself, but I had the muzzle, I had the, the writing on the, the sign, and the woman had a mouth. And when I finished, I showed you the, the, the painting, and I wasn't, I was still like feeling something was wrong, you know? So, so I, I thought I had finished the painting and I, I let it sit for a couple of days, but I was talking to friends and trying to understand. And then I, I uh, spoke to a friend, to a Brazilian friend who's black. And uh, she, said, she, 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 said, she said two things that really woke me up. The first thing was like, yeah, this is problematic. It's like you are holding the sign. And of course, I will never hold this sign. And I read the, I was researching the image. Uh, this was a protest in front of the Humboldt County uh, courthouse. And this woman, she later apologized for uh, holding the sign. And she, in her defense, she said that she didn't know uh, she didn't read the sign, she was just holding, which I think is a lie, but yeah. when I read that and my friend said that, I was like, wow, you know, it's, it's, it's like 
yeah, I, I, I can't show this painting and say, no, I, you know, I don't want to say what, is, what the painting is saying. You know, so I, I felt like I was doing the same thing the, the, the lady was doing, like, yeah, I'm holding the sign, but yeah, I, I really don't agree with it, you know. So, so I decided to change. Actually, now, now we can go to the, the last uh, uh, image, because the second thing my friend said, uh, she told me about this artist, it's a Brazilian artist, and she was like, uh, Yuri, uh, Yuri Cruz, um, he made an artwork, I don't know if you saw it, I hadn't seen uh, with uh, the Anastasia, Anastasia without the muzzle. So I, I went to his website where I took this, uh, this uh, artwork from and, and I, I've seen the artwork and how do you call the, the little uh, uh, flyers you, you give to people with images of saints here in America? Oh, yeah. Um, oh my gosh, how do you say that in English? We call santinhos, uh, which is little saints in Portuguese. Yeah. They're little, yeah, they're, they're little saints cards that have the image on one side and a prayer on the other. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, so um, this artist made this, you know, this little print. Uh, and in his, in his uh, show, you could go and, you know, take uh, one card. And, but what really got me was the, the prayer itself, because he wrote a, a completely different prayer. And at some point, uh, let me read a, a section to you. Um, he says, you, you became, um, your fight uh, turned you into a superior person and you gained back your voice. So when I read that, I was like, wow. And, and of course, talking with my friend about, you know, the meaning of muzzles and, and then I'm, I'm answering a question about the voice itself. That really impacted me. Um, and the name of the, the artwork is, uh, is Monument to, to Her Voice. And it was, it, was, uh, it was shown in a wall where he printed in Portuguese, like with huge letters. It was written voice. And, and the little painting, like really, you know, like a little square and, and the saints and you could take one of, saint, one of the, the flyers with the, the prayer. And I thought the artwork was, uh, was perfect. He's a black artist and uh, I think he was extremely uh, successful, way more successful than I was like representing Anastasia. Uh, and then I decided to, to change the paint, to take out the, the muzzle to erase part of the the saying because of course i have to say i uh, i forgot to say the idea for this painting it, it was before the racial uh, unrest that we are facing right now and uh, it, uh, george floyd murder and of course after that happened it was even worse you know it, it got different meanings and so so I felt like I had to do something to the painting. So it's when I erased the white women uh, uh, mouth and I, I removed, we can see here, I removed the muzzle trying to recreate her face. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I'm, I'm way more happier with this, uh, with this result. Oh, one other thing that made me think, because my friend said, uh, you should look for a, a black people representation by uh, white artists. And uh, this is an interesting thing because since I have a light skin uh, in Brazil, everybody sees me uh, as white. And here in America, I'm not white. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's an interesting, of course, I'm not saying my, uh, my experience, experience is anything related to someone with a dark skin. Uh, but it made me think of these uh, representations, and so I saw the. I finally saw the movie uh, Django Unchained, the Tarantino movie, and I got really impressed because he's a white director and he was representing uh, black characters in a really uh, powerful way. You know, uh, I don't remember any good or any. Um, Good is a good word. Any good white character in that movie, except for the 
the guy who teaches him the you know to 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 shoot and stuff but even that guy the german guy he was he was older and he wasn't like the white hero he wasn't saving the the black character you know he was helping but then at the end django does everything by himself um and burns the plantation and kill everybody and so spoiler alert <laughs> didn't see the movie but anyway those things um uh, and uh joining the protest with uh with jessica uh my stepdaughter and seeing everything you know uh, here in buffalo we're having like almost every day you know so seeing people uh join the protest a lot of white people and and the whole thing about uh being silent uh during uh during times like this uh so so yeah that's that that's why i i decided to uh, change the image change the painting well, I, I love this image, and I, I I'm glad I saw the original version before before it underwent this other change, um, because it it's so interesting that in this version it's the white woman who is silenced, and it's the the black saint who is who is voiced, and also the the partial erasure of the words, right? Because uh, the oops, sorry, the original being right. Uh, muzzles are for dogs and slaves, almost justifying the use of muzzles, by the way, in that image. Yeah, yeah, completely justifying. Right. And then I, all that we can see really is I am a free human being. Um, and it's sort of the, the, the inversion of the meanings from, from the original uh, uh, photograph. The... I also find it so fascinating the intent by white people to um, appropriate uh, black images of oppression and equate them to an inconvenience uh, that they find uh, problematic. And yeah. we have seen with, as you mentioned, with these George Floyd uh, protests, the counter protests of people appropriating images of black oppression as if it were the same thing. And uh, it's clearly not. So I love this painting sort of inversion of, of, these, of, these, uh, of these images. Um, I wonder if, if you wanna maybe talk about why the, the color scheme um, here a little bit. Hello? Yeah. I just wondered if you wanted to talk about the fact that um, it's mostly a, a gray scale uh, image or blue scale image. Yeah. Uh, um, usually I, uh, I start a painting with, a, with an underpainting uh, monochromatic you know, scheme. And uh, that's how I started this one. It wasn't supposed to be like this. It was just... Uh, it was just an underpainting. Uh, it's a it's a common practice uh, in painting. You 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 first start with the with one uh, color to create the the shadows and you know the the uh, volumes, uh, and then you apply color on top of it. And but when I when I did that, the image itself. If if you go back to the the photograph, the image itself it's almost except for, except for the the green but when you crop the same way i cropped because i cropped here mm -hmm. the, uh it erases part of the gray part of the, the the green and you have you i will have only a little bit of yellow here and it's a pale uh yellow uh as we can see on the picture so it was already kind of monochromatic so so when i when i finished the underpainting i was uh, i was happy with that that result and and that happens a lot of times with painting you just like you know have different ideas when you uh as you go um but of course the the blue and uh and and um, red meaning you know of the, the the relation to the flag and everything else and uh 
Uh, it was really convenient that she was wearing this uh, red uh, scarf, which I was thinking during the painting that she was probably wearing that as a mask and she, she pulled down. Oh, right. That actually uh, makes sense. Th that's my guess, but I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. the, whole, the, the whole thing about the image uh, uh, really, uh, it was really interesting to me. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's how I decided it will be, uh, it will stay blue and, um, and red. I quite like it. I find it very striking, the color scheme. Just so, a lot of your work I find very colorful, which is engaging and cheerful, as you said. Um, yeah, this is not a happy work, so. <laughs> right. But I, I, I think the colors actually enhance that mood of, of enhance the problematics of, of what you're representing here. So I, I really, mm. really like it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I wonder if you want to, if you have any other projects that you're currently e exploring or thinking about or, or doing. Yeah, I do have. Uh, it's always hard uh, for an artist to talk about a process that aren't uh, done. But, but yeah, I want to go on with the Americana series. Um, the name itself, uh, Americanas with an S at the end, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's related to this uh, uh, feeling of trying to reference both cultures at the same time. Americanas in, in, in Portuguese it's, uh, is the name of another big chain store <laughs> in Brazil, even bigger than the, the one with the burn statue, burning statue. Uh, it's called Lojas Americanas, which is like American, American stores in a translation. So uh, I started the series thinking about this, uh, this influence and like I said, cultural uh, imperialism. And so one of the, the artworks I'm planning is uh, with the bag itself, the plastic bag, because it has Americanas, you know, mm. and it's, uh, it's almost a copy of the Target uh, bag, you know, the red and, and, and uh, white colors. So I have that in mind. Um, I have some, uh, some artworks with uh, Uncle Sam, which is not going to be Uncle, Uncle Sam, but we have this, uh, and it's hard to explain without the image, but it, we have this uh, huge Brazilian personality that it wasn't exactly making a reference to Uncle Sam with the picture I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna to relate to that. So, and I have a few more ideas. Um, and like I said, I, I'm trying to, to find those, uh, those images in between mm -hmm. the two cultures and uh, images that can create this, uh, this kind of a disturbance in a sense. Right. And, uh, I'm sorry, no. just, just to finish uh, the, the, the thought about the, the last painting. Of course, the racial aspect of, the, of both cultures are a huge part of, uh, of everything, of everything, how the cultures uh, uh, mingle or, or doesn't, you know, and uh, race is seen in a different way in Brazil. Of course, we have a lot of racism and a lot of problems with that. And, uh, but it, it's, it takes different ways, you know, it takes different uh, routes. And now living in America, I'm, I'm seeing how things are here and how people think and the whole classification thing. And, uh, and even the, the fact that I'm not white, you know. <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> not that it matters. <laughs> Little did you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, these things are uh, creating an uh, impact mm -hmm. on my artwork, and uh, and I wanna, I wanna, you know, explore that. I wanna think about it. I wanna, I wanna talk about that. Well, it, it's all fascinating, and you're right. Americans have a very distinct perception of race and it's sometimes difficult to negotiate between American perceptions of race and Latin American 
broadly speaking, perceptions of race, because they're very different. Yeah. And, and trying to sort of make those make sense mutually is, is often a, a challenge. Yeah. So if people want to see more of your work, where can they go? They can go to my website, uh, which I hope it's on the screen sometime. <laughs> uh, it, it was earlier and it will be posted in the module. Okay, it's gonna be posted somewhere because nobody's gonna understand my accent, but it's uh, Cristiano F. Lopez with S. Uh, Cristiano without the age, F. Lopez, uh, dot com, dot br. And my, uh, uh, I'm, I'm always posting uh, on Instagram my artworks and even the process. So my Instagram, Instagram handle is uh, Chris, C-R-I-S, Chris, F as in, uh, Frank. Fame. <laughs> As a <in> tag. <laughs> Chris F. Lopez. Lopez again with S instead of Z. Pereira, which is my last name. P E R E I R A. Wonderful. We will post. And it's, it's a, all written somewhere because it's going to be <laughs> yeah. hard to, to write this out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's in the second slide of the, of the presentation. It's in your bio that will be on the module and we'll post it on, on the Facebook page. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Well, Christiana, this has been wonderful to talk to you and to explore some more of your paintings. Um, and I hope that you continue to, pay, to paint wonderfully engaging things. and. I hope that we can see each other in person in the near future. Sure, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure uh, talking about the, the artwork, talking about the process. It helps me a lot. You know, it helps me think uh, in a different way because, of course, verbalizing it's a, is, a, is another level of communication. Uh, you know, it's a different level of communication, you know, different than painting so so yeah it was great well thank you i enjoyed it and uh i look forward to more okay thank you bye-bye bye-bye okay so i stopped recording